Hey, my name is David Buck, and in this video, we're going to learn about the color grading tab in Lightroom Classic. You know, these super colorful wheels right here. So super condensed version, these wheels introduce a desired hue and saturation into the shadows or midtones or highlights of an image. So what are these color wheels? Well, the roots come from film editing. These color grading wheels in conjunction with the tone curve are the main tools used in Hollywood film editing to give films a specific look. And now they've been brought over to Lightroom, which I'm totally a fan of. So let's take a look at what they can do. There are two main purposes with these color grading wheels. To add a stylized look or split tone an image, and correcting color casts, which there are many ways to do in Lightroom. So we're going to start with the stylized looks because that's probably why you clicked on this video. And we'll look at how we can trick Lightroom to do it selectively, even though that's a feature that's not really available in Lightroom. So this is the last step of the photo editing process. And as such, you can make changes to either JPEG or RAW images pretty much the same way. So when we open the color grading panel, you'll see you have an option of having three wheels show or one wheel show at a time. So these three different wheels represent the color tones of the shadows or darker parts of the image, the midtones or the overall color of the image, and the highlights or the bright parts of the image. If I make an adjustment to the shadows, Lightroom will change the hue of the shadows towards the color chosen in the wheel. Then you'll see the specific color in a little circle outside of this big circle. The further your selector dot is from the center, the more saturation of that color or intensity you'll get in the shadows. So you can click once for the color you want, then click and drag up and down that line and it'll keep the same color and it'll give you more or less of the effect. So click once, then drag, or click and drag for the whole wheel in any color and any intensity. As always, Lightroom gives you a live preview of what's happening with your adjustments. So the midtones and the highlights wheels work the same way, and you can click this little eyeball right here on each wheel to see which one of them is affecting the image. So that's super helpful when you want to find out where your color is coming from. Now, if you click to one of the individual wheels, you'll see that this little square pops up right here. This is really helpful because when you click on this, a list of five color swatches comes up. And these are five common colors that you can choose from. Or you can select the eyedropper here and click and then drag. So click and hold the eyedropper tool and point to any part of the image and select the color that's in the image. The cool thing is, of course, that it shows you live what the color choice will look like at full saturation. So it gives you a really good idea if uh, you want to find out where you want to go with the edit, and then you can dial it back to the amount that you want. So super cool. Dial up and down on the luminous to adjust the brightness of that tonal range. So now the real question of the color grading is, what colors do I use and why? Here we have to jump into a little bit of color theory. So the color combinations that are pleasing to humans are the complementary colors and the analogous. I know, a strange word. Analogous colors, think of the colors you would pick when designing the interior of a home. So these colors would look good right next to one another if you put a bunch of throw pillows on a couch. So these are colors that are beside each other on the color wheel. Complementary colors are those that are opposite each other on the color wheel. And these could be two straight across or three making a triangle shape on the wheel like this, like a blue yellow or this magenta green. Yes, this is starting to sound an awful lot like high school art class, but if you look at beautiful artwork that we have from 400 years ago, the same color principles are used with great skill and still look fantastic today. Stick to the tried and tested rules and you'll do well in your images. Playing around with these tints and tones gives you an endless amount of options and looks. Hop over to the tone curve, select this button here, click and drag the contrast where you want, and you'll get a beautiful finished image. So before we jump over to fixing unwanted colors, I'm going to show you a little Lightroom hack here. Color grading images with people in them is rather challenging because trying to get the skin tones looking believable while giving the image an overall tone is very challenging. So if we go up here to the selection masks and make a new mask on the background and then an adjustment to the background using white balance, going towards the colors that you want for the shadows. So if you have a blue tone in the shadows, make the background selection more blue and then drop the saturation down. Then come back here to the color grading, add a little bit of blue to the shadows and a bit more of the opposite color to the highlights, in this case yellow, and there. And now you get your color grade throughout the image and the skin tones are adjusted less than the rest of the image. Of course, you have more control of the, over this in Photoshop and you could bring it into there and change it, but this is an excellent workaround if you want to stay within Lightroom. What's interesting about this last adjustment is that we reveal another use of the color grading tab, and that is if we made quite a few adjustments to an image and it didn't look or quite put together, as it were, by adding a color to the shadows of the entire image, it brings the edit together to make it look cohesive. Adding a global color adjustment at the end often makes the edit feel more intentional, 
So if you know that you want a tone at the end, you can push your adjustments within the image a little bit further and then tie it together with a color grade at the end. Okay, so now comes the pesky color casts. Unfortunately, when you're photographing in the real world, you get unwanted color casts. Take, for example, you've got a sunny day with no clouds, you have warm orange light coming from the sun on one part of your subject, and then you have the deep blue colored lights coming from the sky lighting your shadows. So because that blue tone is permeating the shadows, let's go to our color grading, choose shadows, and click on the color of the shadow by using the eyedropper, and then move, to the move the selection to the opposite side of the color wheel. That will start to negate that color within the shadows. So slide the dot to the desired amount so that it looks correct, and fix the cast, fix the color cast in the shadows. As with anything in Lightroom, there are multiple ways to manage these same types of things. I could go to the HSL tab and use just the blue tone slider specifically, or I could adjust the overall white balance toward orange. I could create a tone curve in the blue yellow color curves. I could use the camera calibration to adjust the blues. This just gives you another tool in your tool belt to get your image looking just the way that you want in Lightroom. And of course, any of these changes that you make, you can save to new presets in Lightroom so that you can use them to apply to all of your images in the future. The super fun thing about the presets is that you can apply it and then use this handy slider right here to dial in the amount of adjustment that you want to your next image. So when you find one that you really like, save it as a preset. So that should get you started on the right path for color grading your images. Thanks so much for watching.